Hi, my name is Tessa and I'm the product owner here at EcoChain. In this video, I'll show you how to model a product's life cycle. Modeling a product's entire life cycle is important because it helps you take into account any other phases it might go through, like its user end of life. This way you can make sustainable decisions for its design and avoid unnecessary trade-offs. First, let's go find a product that we already modeled. In this case, I modeled a t-shirt. Same one you can all find in your t-shirt demo. T-shirt polyamide white. Let's open this one. So as you can see, this t-shirt has already been modeled, at least the production side of it. So now we want to model the entire life cycle. In the top right corner, there's a button called Tools, and here you will find the life cycle functionality. Let's open it. As you can see, you can open existing ones or create a new one. So for this video, I'll create a new one and call it Lifetime of Polyamide White T-shirt. You can add an additional description to your life cycle. Uh, in this case, I'll just leave it empty. Uh, for your life cycle, you can define the functional unit. So this is also free. You can leave it empty or you can fill in the number of years you'll be using it or the number of uses. So my example, I'll take two years. Then in this drop down, you can find uh, several life cycle templates. So we modeled a few ones for you. Uh, I'll take the five phases one, which has the most phases available. So as you can see, our original product is now placed in a uh, longer timeline, which includes a packaging phase, transport phase, use phase, and end of life phase. I'll make this a bit smaller. So we know it's still there, but it's less prominent. On the right side, I still have the lifecycle detail panel open. So if you like, you can also change its name over here or change the functional units anytime later. Let's go to the packaging phase. So what you do is you click add sub item. And in this case, I already have plastic packaging available in my account. Plastic packaging. And I just need one piece of this. Okay. Because it was already created, you can see uh, it's there, the electricity use and the, uh, and the granulates that we need to create plastic packaging. Next up is transport. So you can also click the face uh, and change the name over here if it's uh, if you need to have it a different name and add sub item or remove a face. So let's add a sub item to transport. So for transport, we have a template available in the lifecycle feature. Let's open it. You can select an existing template if you have already created one or you can create a new one. So in this example, I want to go from Bangladesh, where my t-shirt is produced, to Amsterdam. Transport. An additional description. So we will be taking a ocean ship uh, from Bangladesh port to Amsterdam. And this is around 15,000 kilometers. Next up, we take a lorry from, what shall we do, Rotterdam to Amsterdam. I don't know the exact distance, but let's assume 150 kilometers. Then over here, oh, Bangladesh, of course. We can select which product you would like to transport. So you can include the final product, which is the t-shirt, but you can also create transport for each of the individual elements or materials that you have used in producing this product. So in this example, I want to produce the t-shirt, but also the plastic packaging, of course, it's, it's, it's one final product. So first up is Bangladesh. I don't know the exact port, just go with this one, to Rotterdam. And then we have to fill in what kind of uh, transport we want to take. I'll take the ocean ship with a distance of 15,000 kilometers. Next up is Amsterdam. That will go from Rotterdam to Amsterdam by a lorry for 150 kilometers. All right, so let's add this one. Okay. As you can see, 
uh, it created uh, two, two times the transport for one for the plastic packaging and one for the t-shirt itself. And you can see the contribution of the lorry and the ocean ship. ship. As you can see, the amount and unit here for transport is a uh, ton kilometer, which basically means multiplying the weight of your product in tons times the distance you want to transport it in kilometers. So that's the way uh, LCA is done for transport services, at least for uh, transporting goods. Just one more thing I want to show you because um, to show up in the transport template, these uh, transport methods, you need to have created them beforehand. So you need to have a product, which is your transport lorry, and you have to give it a property called goods goods transports. So this, this way uh, the application will recognize it's a transport so that you can use it in your transport templates. And of course I have a uh, reference from the database connected to it for in this case lorry transport. Next up is the use phase. I'll be cheating a little bit to save time but uh, I've already created a few uh, scenarios for, for using the uh, t-shirt the so of course you need to wash it. So let's have a look if we can find it. 14 degrees. And because our functional unit was two years, we need to wash it for two years. Which basically means that you have modeled how often you will be washing your t-shirt in those two years and the uh, electricity that is required. Okay, next up, we have to dry it. Drying, also for two years. And finally, we have to iron it. Of course, this depends on the kind of product. So maybe a polyamide t-shirt, you won't have to iron as often as a uh, cotton t-shirt. So you can also make different ironing scenarios over here. One for a cotton t-shirt and one for polyamide t-shirts and then reduce how often this needs to be done. So you can see for two years of drying, we have a certain amount of electricity that we need. Also for ironing and for washing, we will need soap and water next to electricity. And because it's in the Netherlands, I've used the Dutch electricity mix instead of a, a different mix. Last up, up is our uh, end of life phase. Uh, let's first actually transport it because when our product is at the end of life at a user, he will, the product will have to go to some sort of recycling or disposal facility. This one is already created, so I already have a transport template for waste collection. As you can see, all the details are already filled in. I only have to tell what I'm uh, going to transport for the weight. So that's the polyamide t-shirt. Uh, and the assumption here is that there's 150 kilometers by a waste collection truck. Okay. Also important when using the transport template, it will calculate based on the weight of your product. So of course your product needs to have a weight. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Our t-shirt, if you click it in the right detail panel, of course there's a lot of information, but there's also the properties. So the properties are an expression of, you, you can pick multiple properties over here, but in this case, it's the weight per piece of product. Uh, so now the system knows that one piece of t-shirt weighs this amount of uh, kilograms. You can also add other properties like volume and use this information in your, your calculations later on. Volume. I have no clue. A okay, little bit. Then we are still working on the end of life phase. So we currently have a bit of transport. Now let's also add a disposal. Disposal of t-shirt, one piece. So also this product I've modeled already before. And you can see disposal of the t-shirt uh, includes a bit of landfill and a bit of incineration. So where the total weight of the product is around 0.2 kilogram, uh, a certain percentage will go to landfill and uh, another big percentage will go to incineration. So this is not a very sustainable end of life we have at the moment. So that's what you can see over here. So this is our product life cycle. Uh, so we have the production phase, any additional packaging, transport, use scenarios and end of life that we, we need for our product for two years. So that's a long time for a t-shirt. Then uh, you can see the results in the flat view. 
without the phases, but you can also include the phases in there. And then you can use the uh, filter or arrow options here in the top to put it in the correct order. So to go from production to transport and end of life and then see where the most impact is at. Or if you remove them, the intermediate parts will be summed up again. Finally, the sunburst. This one is also most interesting. If you show the phases, the, show, the sunburst is also clickable. So if you click the production phase, you can zoom in and see where the biggest impact is in each phase, or the in the use phase, for example, mainly electricity. So that's it. This is how you model a product's life cycle. Very short, very quick, but I hope it helps you at least get started. Uh, next up, in other videos, we can have a look how to improve the design of a product.